why should we trust anything run by your billionaire tycoon paymaster, who I'm sure is a nice guy, but no one here is not on your payroll, and I think you've shaped a lot of this commentary to support your boss's desires. It's weird to me. Okay, so why don't we clear up a few facts? So first of all, no one here is on the payroll. We don't well, we just heard any. that they were. We just heard no, that they were. Right. No, so we, we gave uh, some money to Rattler in 2015. <laughs> We didn't have to respond to this one, yeah, but this one. So I'll, I'll pick that one up because I'm going to use you as a proxy for President Duterte. No, so, no, don't um, do, no, don't uh, do that. One, don't do that. I'm not a proxy for no, Duterte. No, I'm just telling you because I think this kind of simplification is dangerous. It makes all of us vulnerable. Number one, the SEC, we're not foreign only. I started a startup. I took investors in it. They can all have 10 million views and they can come from rainbow colors. I don't much care. I have parameters for these investors. Those parameters give a shareholder's agreement that makes us, actually me, the one in control, puts me in control. They invest knowing that. The SEC they disagreed turns, with you. Actually, it does, because we're still, we're actually winning. The Court of Appeals has moved forward. Omidyar right? gave up his stock. Now, but let me, let me finish, because well, I'd certainly let you have your time, right? So let me have I my Actually, time. my question was so for Mr. Lalwani, though. Um, it, let's take a look at how much. Let's look at the full range of investments. There's a maybe about four and a half million dollars that went into Rappler. Only four and a half only, million eh? dollars. Only. Only. And we've been able, that's seven years of, of uh, actually being able to be, do hard reading investigative reporting. Of that, probably less than 5%. You're, you're defending because, frankly, your boss, but can I, I hear from him instead? You know, when he you can give me four and a half million bucks and I'll let right? him call me his boss. You challenge something that is important. I didn't ask you a question with all due respect. Let, please let Maria respond. Okay, will you respond too? I will respond. Okay, I look forward to that. I look forward to that. I'm very happy to respond. You don't seem to be. If you stop interrupting, let's go quick. Okay, I look forward to that. So I'll just lay it in the end. We're an independent news group. Sure you are. I mean, our network had less than 5% of the shares in Rapper, which was full to the minimum. Every investment that was made ran through the a big four. Uh, our auditor was KPMG. We had the, the law firm that actually created Philippine depository receipts. You have to give me that because you can't let a statement like that lie because that can be picked up and send me to jail. Right? That's the difference between your world and mine. I'm very careful about my words and factual. Sorry, please. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that. I do think it is very important to be clear about facts, which include, um, you know, as Maria said, in Rappel, it was 5% for capital. Uh, we don't own majority stakes in any single media company. Um, uh, the Pierre has no say in the investments that we make um, in, in our media companies. We do that as a, as a team at an independent level. Um, we have no editorial input whatsoever in any of the media companies that we fund. And if you don't believe me, you just ask them. I mean, just verified that. But there's lots of other grantees of ours here. And lastly, I think we're uh, able to support this conference, this bipartisan conference, because we're a credible investor in media. And we have been for 10 years, we've supported um, investigations at the ICIJ, in the Panama Papers, OCCRP, we did the Danske Bank anti money laundering scandal. And so our independence is proven over a long period, and we, we hope that continues. I'm here in the United Kingdom for the Media Freedom Conference that appears to be anything but. It's an Orwellian gathering of the Canadian and British governments who are both engaging in massive censorship on social media, but they're going to swan about a bit with celebrities like Amal Clooney pretending they believe in civil liberties. We'll see over the course of the next two days if they will. If you want to see all our videos and chip in to cover our journalistic costs, we're independent, unlike most media here, please go to mediafreedomconference.com.